Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Before we jump in today, I want to quickly address a few comments I have received about the content here on this podcast. Now, normally I wouldn't spend time on something like this, but just for clarity, I have over nine years of formal education, including a doctorate in pharmacy and 16 years of clinical experience, which includes serving as an adjunct professor at a United States pharmacy school and working in oncology and inflammatory disease at a teaching hospital. And yes, for now, you just hear my voice, but that may change. I do plan to incorporate video in the future. I've simply just held off because it takes significantly more time to produce, and my priority has been getting the education out to you consistently. Remember, the content here is free and meant for education. If it's not for you, that's completely fine. You do not have to listen. It takes a lot of time and energy to really put this together every week, and tuning in is entirely your choice. For my other listeners, I want to really thank you for your support and your gratitude over the last few years. Now, today I want to dive into a compound called ATX-304. It's often referred to as exercise in a pill. And after we go through the science together, you'll see why. We'll cover the backstory on it, how it works, how it differs from typical mitochondrial supplements. I'll even talk briefly about some animal and human data so far, and then who this may or may not be for, and most importantly, what to watch out for. So let's sort of go over the backstory and why it's getting attention. ATX304 was first developed in Sweden by Beta Genon AB as a small molecule AMPK activator designed to mimic the metabolic benefits of exercise and caloric restriction with the goal of improving obesity, insulin resistance, and overall metabolic health. Early preclinical work in obese and diabetic mice showed impressive results, which included better glucose uptake, enhanced fat burning, improved insulin sensitivity, and even cardiovascular benefits. Human data followed in 2016, where people with type 2 diabetes already on metformin took ATX-304 for about 28 days. Those studies showed reductions in fasting and plasma glucose, improved insulin resistance, and strong safety and tolerability. Today, Beta Genon has evolved into a company called Amplifier Therapeutics, and ATX-304 is now in in phase two development for metabolic, cardiovascular, and liver-related conditions with ongoing work to refine oral delivery and really broaden its potential uses. So what exactly does AMPK do? You want to think of AMPK as a fuel gauge for your cells. When your cells are running low on energy, like when you haven't eaten, exercised, or your cells are stressed, when you're sick, AMPK turns on. When it's on, it tells the cells to stop storing energy, which is less fat and cholesterol production. It starts using energy, so burning sugar and using fat for fuel and also helping to clean up damaged parts or what we like to refer to as autophagy or cellular housekeeping. Basically, AMPK flips the switch from energy saving mode to energy spending mode, similar to how your body behaves during exercise or fasting periods. If AMPK is off or underactive, your cells tend to store energy instead of using it, which contributes to things like weight gain, insulin resistance, and low metabolic activity. So activating AMPK, like with ATX-304, is like giving your body a little nudge to burn energy, improve your metabolism, and clean up the cells, even without intense exercise. And beyond just turning on AMPK, ATX-304 also acts as a mild mitochondrial activator, meaning it helps the cell's power plants, or the mitochondria of the cell, run more optimally, increasing energy expenditure. And because of this mechanism, ATX-304 is sometimes called an exercise mode. A medic, mimicking exercise. Even though it's not a substitute for movement or physical activity, it triggers many of the same downstream pathways. So how does it differ from mitochondrial supplements that we're already aware of? So there are many supplements out there that claim that they boost mitochondrial. For example, PQQ, CoQ10, and even some of the NAD precursors. These may, in fact, very well support mitochondrial health or function, but typically they don't change the body's energy balance set point or shift you into a state of enhanced energy usage. ATX-304, however, directly activates AMPK, that master switch we talked about, and supports mitochondrial output. So you get signaling plus 
essentially like a hardware improvement. This dual action is what really sets ATX 304 apart from the other supplements that you may be aware of. Also, many mitochondrial supplements lack robust human metabolic dysfunction data, and ATX 304 has animal and early human trial data that we can often refer back to. So what about safety? In human trials, ATX-304 was safe, well-tolerated. It also lowered fasting plasma glucose and helped with insulin resistance. But because it's still early in the stages of research, long-term safety and outcomes like fat loss, muscle preservation beyond just short-term, cardiovascular endpoints, et cetera, are just really not fully proven yet. One of the most exciting things, though, about ATX-304 is that it encourages the body to burn fat while sparing lean muscle. Because AMPK activation improves muscle glucose uptake and mitochondrial efficiency, your body can preferentially use fat for energy instead of than breaking down your muscle, as we see in other compounds. Preclinical and early human studies suggest that it can reduce fat mass while preserving this muscle, which really makes it especially interesting for anyone that may be transitioning off of a GLP-1 or a dual GIP GLP-1 agonist, or even people that are looking to maintain muscle while losing fat. So what is some of the practical dosing that we see in this wellness context? So some peptide clinics use ATX-304 in dosing ranges from 100 to 400 milligrams a day. It usually comes in 100 milligram or 200 milligram capsules that you take by mouth, and people often take it in the morning to really match your body's peak metabolic activity. Keep in mind also that the studies, the preclinical studies and the studies with the animals and human studies used much higher doses, but the way I look at it is, is less is more. So we want to find that perfect dose for you, the lowest dose where you do not have any side effects and you also reap the benefits from it. The last thing I want to discuss is cost. So ATX 304 is currently quite expensive and there are a few reasons really for that. Only a handful of companies manufacture it. So production volumes are really small and synthesis of the actual compound is really complex, and the supply chain for key precursors is very limited. Since it still is an early development, so these phase two trials, economies of scale really haven't been established yet, so this lends to that really expensive price tag on this compound. Thanks again for listening to the Peptide Podcast. If you want to support what we do, head on over to our partners page. You'll find some pretty amazing brands that we trust and that we personally use. And by checking them out, you're helping us keep the podcast going. And until next time, be well. And as always, have a very happy, healthy week.